Hi, in this short video, I'm going to explain about the confidence interval, which is mostly represented by an error bar in Seaborn. So what exactly is this? Well, the black lines that you see here in this chart, all these black lines that you see here, these are called the error bars representing the confidence interval. So what exactly is this chart to begin with? This is the CAD plot on the Titanic data showing the statistic of the mean age across several groups of passengers. Now, what are the several groups now? Well, to begin with, this mean age that is shown by this bar, uh, the mean age is around 45. So this bar represents all the male passengers who died because the blue is survived equal to zero, that's basically who died. So all the male passengers who died in class one is shown by this bar. So the mean age of this group is around 45. And this bar shows the mean age of all, again, the male passengers in class one who survived. And then this bar shows all the female passengers who died in class one. Um, and again, the mean age turns out to be around 25, 26. If you project this, it comes to around 26 maybe. And then here, this bar represents the mean age of all the female passengers who survived in class one, and that turns out to be, the mean age turns out to be around 35. And the same statistic is calculated for the other two classes as well, P class two and P class three with the same subgrouping of male and female across dead and survived. Now, why is that this line is so big compared to the rest of them? And what does this really signify? Well, in simple terms, this signifies the error that, it, uh, that the algorithm is projecting for the population parameter. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, to begin with, we know that this is a sample. The data that we have from Titanic is representing about 700 or so passengers. Um, so in actually, let's see the total, 891. So 891 records of passengers is what we have. Um, but the actual ship had more than 3,000 passengers, 3,500 or something like that. So this obviously does not represent the full population. It's a sample. So the mean age that you found here represents that of the sample and not of that of the population. Well, this algorithm is telling us with this error bar that the mean age of the population, that is the population parameter of the mean age, is maybe five on the lower side, lower side of it, or it could be around 50 on the upper side of it. Um, although it is showing around 25 here. So in other words, it's saying the mean age of the population can be plus or minus 25 years. So that's a big range. Let's also notice that the error bar for male who died um, in P class three is really very small. So what this algorithm is telling with this very small error bar is that the mean age of male is around 29. So it's, a, it's not truly 30 as you can see, if you project this line, it comes to around 29. So it's saying that the population mean is plus or minus one to this 29. And that is represented by this error bar. Uh, so how is this exactly calculated? So what is the principle in which it's um, able to calculate this error bar with just the sample itself? Uh, let's take a look by running some queries. So for that, let's start with the query, uh, which is to get this one. This is the one which has the highest error bar. So let's start with that. So this big long query that you're seeing where P class is equal to one, and sex is female and then survived is zero is the representation of this bar 
And if I now run the mean function on the age column, I get 25.66, and that is pretty much what you're going to get if you project this line um, to the y-axis. Um, now, if you try and find how many this, these values are, you will see that it only has three values. And these three values are really diverse. Uh, first of all, the number of uh, number of data points that you have is really small, and those three data points are not even close to each other. There is a big variance in in the values. So, when it calculated the CI, it landed up really being too big. Now, how do we calculate this uh, the, the the CI? Well, one of the methods of calculation CI is just find the standard deviation. If you change the default calculation for this confidence interval by saying that just show me the standard deviation uh, and nothing else, and if you try to draw this, you will see that the standard deviation is pretty big for almost all of them. All the bars have a big standard deviation. Now, how do we know that? Um, you find out the standard deviation by running the describe on this age column, you will see that the standard deviation is 24, mean is 25.66, and the standard deviation is 24. So this bar that you see is minus 24 and plus 24 on this 25.66. So 25.66 is at this point. Um, so it's showing us an error bar, one standard deviation on the negative side and one standard deviation on the positive side. So in other words, uh, if you consider the uh, con confidence interval as one standard deviation, then this is the error bar. However, if you remove this, then the way it computes the confidence interval is through bootstrapping samples. So what does that mean? Bootstrapping is using the same sample data to infer the population's parameter by resampling the sample data in multiple iterations and calculating the statistic against multiple iterations and then inferring the population parameter by taking the standard deviation of the statistic that is computed against the resampled data. So let's take an example for that. Let's say that the data under consideration is one, two, three, four, five as the values of a list. And now your job is to find the mean value. So to find the mean value of this, this is a sample. So let's say that this is a sample of a population of about a hundred numbers. So this is the sample. Now you are required to bootstrap by creating multiple resampling of the sample to find the statistic. So in the first resampling, you may be getting values as two, two, three, one, five. And notice that the number two is repeating. So this type of resampling where the observation can repeat itself in the resampling is called sampling with replacement. And if the same sample is not allowed to repeat itself, then it is called sampling without replacement. And what Seaborn uses is sampling with replacement. Every group that is formed, every subgroup that is formed, um, it resamples that. And by default, I believe it's 10,000 iterations. So it resamples uh, to the exact same number. So if the number that we got is three for this particular subgroup, so it remains three in all the 10,000 resamples. And then it finds the standard deviation of the statistic across these sam resampled data. And that is the error line. That's the bootstrapped confidence interval. Um, and that is what we see in these diagrams. While the default value for the number of iterations is 1000, you can change the default value for the bootstrap iteration from 1000 through to 3000. 
and in which case it runs through the resampling 3000 times and then finds the standard deviation across the statistic that it derived against 3000 resamples. The more the number of iterations that you do, the more stable the length of these error bar tend to be.